I'm, I'm sitting here with all four members of Sloan, Chris Murphy, Andrew Scott, Patrick Pentland, and Jay Ferguson. The latest album is called 12. It's their 12th album. There are exactly 12 songs on it. So in honor of Sloan and the number 12, we thought we might do something different. We've asked each member of the band to pick one Sloan song from their entire catalog that means the most to them. Um, I, think they've, I think they know what they've picked, but I think we're going to proceed as if it's a surprise. And you know what? We're going to see if we can put 12 minutes on the clock for this, too. Want to put 12 minutes on time? <laughs> see if we can do it. Cool. Hey, guys, thanks for coming in. Thanks, thanks for having, having Thank us. Thank you. Did, the, did the clock start? It, we're going to start with, start with Chris. Uh, this is the song you brought in. It's 48 Portraits, written by Andrew, off the 2014 album Commonwealth. Take a listen. That's a little bit of 48 Portraits by Sloan off the band's double album, Commonwealth. Uh, I remember that song really well. It was the, it's the 17, 18 minute song. It was, it's the whole side of the record, right? Exactly. So th this song came out, so we're 11 records. This is our 11th record, and it's a double record where each of us did a side of the record. So Andrew did uh, one song is the whole side of the record. But, it's, but I was counted. I listened through it yesterday. And there are essentially 11 songs in one. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of callbacks, like part seven is like part one, part eight is like part two. And um, so the, it's, it's a whole bunch of songs jammed into one. And I just think it's, um, it was kind of a fun concept record. Like we're always trying to think of a story for our, what are we doing this time? And so we did this sort of like solo EPs on a double record, our second double record. It was kind of a, an obnoxious thing to do that far in our, into our career. And the, and the one song on the one side I thought was kind of the most obnoxious, most fun part of the thing. It was like a great talking point. It was like they each did their own side, and, the, and one guy did his one song the whole song. Anyway, but um, before, when we were putting it together, he had all these kind of like song fragments, so it was kind of like an Abbey Road-style thing where yeah. he put all the songs together. And uh, I remember we were, we were very close to having 200 songs, and we were at like 190 four or five or something Just like in that. the catalog altogether. In the catalog, like Sloan yeah. Songs, yeah. So I was like excited to break 200, but because he made 11 into one, I was like, dude, <laughs> but like we were this shy of 200 yeah. songs. But, so that was the only thing I wasn't happy about. Mm -hmm. But um, I thought it was... Um, I thought it was a really fun talking point. By the way, it's 17 minutes and 49 seconds long, which was 1749 was the year that Halifax was founded. That's why he cut it off there. Just a little tidbit. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we were we opened that tour with with that song every time, like an 18 minute new song. Like it's just kind of an obnoxious thing to do. Yeah. But we're I like to think that we're a cult act that you know some people are along for the ride and they're like great. A 17 minute new song. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, some people are like, play the Future Shop song, and they don't know it, what they're Right, right. I, I apologize but, for that, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, thanks, I said I was thanks sorry. for yelling that. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so it's kind of a fun, polarizing thing that far into our career. I thought it was really gutsy and daring. And uh, I don't know, like, uh, there's a callback to delivering maybe a song from 1999. Uh, what else? I'm just reading my. It says W W L R D at the end. Was that what would what would Lou Reed do? Yeah. So he died in October of 2013, which I guess when we were recording it. The, well, he died the the hour that I came up with that lyric. <laughs> is that so? Yeah. yeah. Andrew is pretty. He's like sometimes he's like, "What's a word for when a computer and somebody say hard drive or something?" And he's like, "Okay, hard." And the hard drive, like he just he'll he'll do anything. Right. He's, he's just throwing it in there. And I would be like, I need two months to think about it. And Andrew, what do you what do you remember from making that making that song? Um, I remember being really reluctant at first because it just seemed like. Uh, putting together a puzzle that was unsolvable and I just had all these bits and pieces and you know Chris was kind of pushing me hey, why don't you should make this thing like a quick one by the who or whatever you got all these little songlets just tie them all together into one mm -hmm. and then when I started just really arbitrarily putting it together it's I guess luck factored into it more than anything because it was like oh this this part ends in G and this this next part starts in G and it was just, it just kind of assembled itself. 
It's a, in I, a lot of ways. I, I haven't I haven't heard that. It was a nice. This was a nice exercise in listening to some of these songs that I haven't I haven't really listened to in a long time. This is one uh, Jay you picked mm-hmm. that <clears throat> I think yeah this gets a fair bit of airplay. This is this is a bit of a bigger song. So Jay picked uh, the other man written by Chris off Pretty Together. I just got a note in my headphones. They're edited. <laughs> he knows that weird I'm a radio friend yeah. of yours, but doesn't know I've crossed the line. I know you've got a man in the picture, but it hasn't stopped me yet. We've all been in one situation <laughs> or another we regret. I don't know if this is a real <laughs> We did this one. We did this version <laughs> before. I, I remember this version. What is this? This isn't the version. It's not the album version. This is like a version that you, or, uh, Sony made us put together for radio. This like, is BMG, actually. Was it BMG? Yeah. yeah. So this yeah. is this is the radio edit. This is the that's the other man from Pretty Together. Jay, why did you pick it? Uh, the reason I chose this song, I think our band uh, Sloan is um, we're known for being or f- fans like would would know that we're sort of four songwriters. Everybody contributes to the band, writes their own songs and everything. I know you mentioned this song was written by Chris, and it's sung by Chris, but it's one of the few songs uh, where everybody kind of had a hand in the creation of making uh, the song or the recording. So um, whereas normally when we make a record or someone has a song, uh, you know, I'll have one and maybe Chris will contribute a little bit to it, or, you know, Andrew has a song and Chris will contribute to that, or Patrick will contribute to one of Chris's or or whatever. uh, it's rare that we all contribute to one song. So this song, uh, the other man, the chords I think are originally yours, right? The chord yeah. sequence, is, like the chord progression is, of the verse in the. Of the verse, it's the yeah, same yeah. chord. It's yeah. It's, oh, no, it's not the same chord progression the whole way through, but it's kind of the same chord progression. Yeah, right. most of the time it's the same chord. So those are Patrick's chords, and then Andrew kind of came up with that little uh, guitar riff that repeats through the song. Yeah. It's the kind of like a little dun, Johnny Marr style. Dun, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Chris kind of took all of that and wrote the melody and the lyrics and made it into a song. And the only thing I really did was we were just learning to uh, record digitally at that uh, around this time. And uh, we all kind of had the program called Logic at home, which is sort of a Pro Tools type of thing. Yeah. And I made a little arrangement. It was like, oh, the riff could go here, and maybe we'll drop it out here, and then uh, maybe you know change the chords slightly here or something like that. So I just I maybe made like a little demo arrangement that we kind of copied for the actual recording. I just did that at the very end. So I think this song uh, is nice because uh, everybody kind of had a hand in in the creating of it, and that's kind of why it sort of means something to me a little bit. That's that's so interesting to me because I think of all this of all the Sloan songs. Um, I, I like until I talked to you guys. Mm-hmm. I think it was in 2014 about Commonwealth. I didn't know about the individual songwriting part. I was just a fan of the band and figured the band jam just got together and wrote songs together. And and Chris, this was always a song that seemed, you know, obviously a, a, a personal song. And I figured, you know, it came out of your bedroom by yourself and you came and came in. You wrote, it. but there was it was it was it was collaborative. Yeah, I mean, lyrically, I probably wrote all the lyrics. Yeah. But uh, no, it was a really fun. I really romant- have a romantic feeling about this song because it is so collaborative, and uh, and Jay he, he really did sort of arrange it like he 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 would have cut the the four four chord part into a three chord part at the end and 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 I think turned it around so that it's backwards chords for a bit. So Jay was uh, in there with the arrangement as he was saying, but he he's not giving himself enough credit. And this but is still he, like a st- sorry. Go ahead. He Patrick. essentially produced the song. Yes, I was going to say it sounded like you. Produced it. It yeah. sounded like you arranged it. Like it sounded like you did yeah. a, l- a little bit, but uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I merely wrote the <laughs> okay. The I wrote the whole song. I <laughs> merely wrote the lyrics and the amazing bridge. Whatever. <laughs> it, was, it was. It was nothing. Do you still like playing that? Because that's one you got. You kind of have to play, right? I like playing that song, and 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 it's funny. Like we go back so far that it used to be that we would know. Okay, when we play this next song, people are going to really respond. But some of them, some of them are so old now that if we're playing at a community event, they might and be like, "Here's one from 1996," and we play it, and people are like, eh, "I don't know if I really know that one," right. but they might know "The Rest of My Life," which came out in 2003. But they don't, they weren't old enough in, to know that one from 1996, or, right. or let alone 92 or whatever. Uh, if you're just tuning in, I'm speaking with Sloan. All four members are here. We're talking about their, uh, we're talking about their picks. I'm going to eventually talk about the new record, but we're talking about their picks. Uh, for their 
not necessarily favorite Sloan songs, but Sloan songs that are, are memorable to them. We've asked each member of the band to bring in his most memorable song from those 12 records. Patrick, you brought in a song that I, I forgot about until I listened to it. And I, mm. I, I, I love this song. I think I forgot all about it. This is, um, no, no, no offense. This is What's to, There to Decide, written by Jay from the Smeared album. Take a listen to this. Uh, from their debut album, Smear, that's a bit of uh, What's There to Decide by Sloan. Patrick, why did you pick that? I don't have a big reason. I just, I've always really liked this song. Mm-hmm. And um, and I've always wanted us to do it live, and we don't. No, you, have, did you do it live Not back in the We happen. did. We did a little. At, but we, I just, we were just talking before we came on that um, we actually recorded another version of this, which I didn't realize, uh, which is a bit more rocked up. Around yeah, the same, or a little more straightforward. Yeah, yeah a little exactly. bit more straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This still, is, yeah. still for smeared, still for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and it sort of represents to me the sound of that record, and w- that record that didn't represent our sound before we recorded it, and didn't really after. Although I, I do harken back to it at times, different songs, but um, I just like it as a melancholy. It, it just sort of the the big. I, for me, the big misconception about us was that because we got signed when grunge was huge, that we were a grunge band, but we weren't really a grunge band. We were trying to be a shoegaze band, which is different, more effects and echoes and feedback and stuff. And so there's not feedback on this, but it, it definitely, and it reminds me of a time as well. You know, it was exciting when we got signed and um, we were not making music like anybody in Halifax was making, and um, which is where we were from. And... Uh, but we were also just talking because I don't remember if I even played on it, and now we're thinking. <laughs> now we're thinking I might have played bass and some guitar on it, but I don't remember doing any of this. That's right. That's another thing. When our band first started, Patrick played bass and Chris played guitar. Like, oh, in the first close to like almost a year, probably or something. Yeah, like that. Live a anyway. year, but that was like nine shows. Or something. Right, and, and that's, eventually we would switch, and I would play bass for some of the show, and then he would play, play bass for some of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when we recorded Smear, we did over a period of time. So some of the songs, pardon me, some of the songs um, I play bass on. And then some of them I play guitar on. Right. Um, Jay, Jay, where does that put you when, when, you, when you listen back to that, <laughs> that song? Because I, 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 I saw you okay. grinning and, and, and scratching down words. No, I was writing out, no, what should I say about this? I wrote down <laughs> lyrically undeveloped. Uh, anyhow, yeah, when I hear it, it's, it's an earlier song that I would have, that I wrote. And I think it's fine and I like the production. And it was a time when uh, a lot of the records that I was listening to or maybe some of us were listening to a uh, band like My Bloody Valentine, which was kind of like uh, what Patrick was talking about, a shoegaze band yeah. from... Uh, late 80s, early 90s in, in England. And uh, that song, I can think of the My Bloody Valentine song that I was trying to what is be it? Like. Which one was it? I think it's called Don't Ask Why. It's on one of those EPs in between oh, really? the records or something like that. And there's a little, even a little melody that kind of sounds like it. So it's, uh, that's what I hear mm-hmm. when I hear that song. Mm-hmm. And I just, I think of it as early songwriting of mine and it just sort of makes me laugh a little bit. But, <laughs> but I enjoy it, like hearing it, it's fun. And, you should and bring it back. Have you thought about bringing it back on well, stage? I'm, I'm going to bring it back. We've, I'm going to sing rehearsed, it. <laughs> we rehearse it and then yeah. we don't do it. That's right. Yeah. We, like we recently did, you've rehearsed it in the past. We did Like every time we go on tour. We didn't. I feel like we've we talk we played about it live a couple of times in the past, maybe eight years or something like that. But Would yeah, you it put it on the table now as it's recorded as a possible, like, as a candidate for an... Here we are. Would for you, live? For another record. For if like you had just it as it is. Oh, I see. Like as it was now. Like would I take it as it was now and put it on a new record? Yeah. Mm. Can I am I allowed to you rewrite some of the lyrics? Can I get back to you on the next episode? See, for me, it's interesting. For me, I don't I mean, I like the lyrics fine, but I yeah. I'm never that attracted to lyrics in songs. I just like the overall package of a song. Right. So I mean some of my favorite songs I don't know the lyrics to the mm-hmm. to the whole mm-hmm. song. Sure. I just, so I guess for me and also there's lots of songs out there that have underdeveloped lyrics, quote unquote, <laughs> that are great. So, you know. Um, That's uh, fair. We got we have one more Thanks. song. Um, Patrick, you brought this in. No, you no, didn't. Uh, right. Andrew Andrew brought this in. Uh, this is from Action Pack. This is Reach Out. That E that E quarters. Reach. 
Well, now there's a bunch of Tony. Want to start it again? What? You want to start it again? No. Okay. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you wanted to hear the beginning of it again. Oh, no, no. I'm just saying it. I just noticed that it's out of tune. Uh-huh. This was um, this was a this was a really this was a really big record for me. This is this was kind of a my big Sloan record in, in my life when when this one came out. I really I love this record so much. I, I, that's because I don't have any songs on it, isn't it? Yeah. That's, <laughs> well, you know, I figured how can now I be passive? How can I be passive aggressive about this? <laughs> how can I take a, a, a snap here, Andrew? Why why this song? Uh, well, you know, when this whole exercise came about, it's like pick a pick pick a Sloan song that means the most to you. It's like. Well, they all mean equally as much to me as the next one. Is that but, so? Well, sure, because yeah. it's all part of this thing that we've collectively generated over a number of years now. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, pick one song. Uh, I love this song, and, I, and it was a weird record for me because I didn't have any songs of my own on it because I had just... I had just had, uh, my wife and I just had our first kid and it was just a, you know, a cave of, of all of that. And I, my, the creativity was, was blocked for me, but we, when we recorded it, we hired a producer, this guy, Tom Rothrock, and we went to Los Angeles and recorded it. So I got to, you know, selfishly get away from the so-called cave of, 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 uh, of babydom after like, <laughs> you, get to, you get to sleep in a bed by yourself. Well, and... But yeah. And I, can, we should edit this out because I could get in a lot of trouble. For real. <laughs> but the, no, the making of this record was, was weird. You know, I played all the drums on all the songs and, and, and you, sort... you did write or co-write some stuff that we just, you didn't want to do, right? Yeah. I th- anything wasn't that like I had was terrible. It, right? And, right. and I was basically like for the lot. sake of this band and this record, Let's let me sit this one out. Right, right. So, so where where does that take you when you hear that song? Like when you just heard it just then? Um, I, it takes me to just the recording of it. I just love. I guess I just love the uh, the sort of figure eight cycle chord progression that just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. And it's a very atypical Patrick song, whatever that whatever that means. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, I'm inside the glass box, so I know what a typical J song or what a typical me song or Chris yeah. song would be, but it's not to, not to be uh, critical or anything, but no. this reach out is just, it's a weird song. And I just, uh, knowing that Patrick is, has historically been the one that, who writes these tunes that end up being on the radio, you know, as so-called singles and stuff, which is great. Yeah. And any song in our catalog, is for, if you ask me to be a radio person to pick, pick the single, or yeah. it's just like any of them. Right. I don't know. Close your eyes and <laughs> right. put your finger on the And, on and, the and as you said, all these songs are equally as meaningful as, as yeah. the next one. But pa- Patrick, when you when you wrote it, did it feel atypical to you? Uh, maybe, because that record, I was trying to write rock songs for that record. And this is a rock song, but it's not a, it's not a typical rock song. Mm-hmm. It is, as he says, it's the same chord progression over and over again. Um, and I do all this yelling at the end of it, like yelling my head off, just like because you know it's it's about being frustrated. And um, but uh, and we do it live, and we do it well live. Like mm. you know, it's a good showcase for for everybody. Yeah, it's a fun one to play live for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's a total stress reliever for me to do live because I can just it's primal scream, not the band, but you know, yeah, like primal <laughs> scream therapy basically. It's the same chords, just lock in, and you can just let out. Yeah, yeah. and I got to do little noisy guitar solos and stuff. Chris, do you think there's any any meaning to be derived from the fact that all of you guys brought in um, sort of aberration songs, like songs that were, as Andrew put it, atypical? Well, I don't know. I think there's a... Uh, we would probably feel goofy about picking, you know... I also could... My other choice might have been The Good and Everyone, which is one of our most popular songs, mm-hmm. which to me is... To me, uh, I still love playing it, and I think it's short and concise, and I think it, it if you had to s- maybe more sums up what people know us as. Yeah. Um, and I still love it a lot. It's Patrick's song. Um, yeah, I, it, it's a ridiculous... We, As I say, we have 200 and 
20 songs or something like that. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's, it's hard. It's a ridiculous thing to say also, like, what piece of art is more meaningful than another piece of art. But yeah, I mean, it's a fun exercise, but, like, I don't, I don't stand by this choice. Like, I think it's a – like I said, 48 Portraits is fun to have such a crazy song that far into our career. Yeah. You know, it, it gives us something to talk about other than how have you guys stayed together so long, which is really all – People can ask us at this point. I can't believe it. it's 27 years. How do you do it? It's How like, do you well, do it? It's like we just well, whatever. We're, yeah. we're getting pretty, giving pretty pat answers at this point. Right. But, uh, it's because we're so cool and yeah. we're so good. And we're so we're so good yeah. looking, and everyone, yeah. we all just want to be one around one another. What's the um, <laughs> the, uh, the last time I talked to you guys was was the guest host. I was guest hosting Q. Right. And I think oh, I, I think it was my first live. I think so too. Yeah, I think it was uh, evident. You were you were you were high fiving everyone. You're like, I got it. This is yeah yeah. That, I'll be that, seeing a lot of you guys. Yeah, that that didn't uh, that didn't turn out to work out the way I had planned. But the uh, it was it was terrifying. Like, and I was but I. I remember listening to that record, uh, Commonwealth, and thinking how exciting it was. Because, like I said, I didn't know that you guys had you typically mm-hmm. wrote, wrote independently and all came together. And this was, um, this is what happened on that record, where each side was given to uh, each of you. Going back in to make this new record, do you think that informed the process of making this new record at all, or did it feel just like going back to old times? Sorry, Commonwealth? Did making Commonwealth no, change I, 12? I don't think so. I think that the way we made... Commonwealth is the way that we made the record before that and the record before that. Right. Whatever they were called. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, I think in my mind, because that Commonwealth where we're each kind of doing solo EPs, it was supposed to be that we came in and we would do a more, a, a less sprawling, more concise collaborative record. And we tried to collaborate. Like I got Patrick, oh, to, right. sing, yeah. got Patrick to sing a verse of the song that, that I wrote because he had, because that I and I and the songs that I chose of mine were songs that like he Patrick had a part in writing that song and he had a part of writing, uh, whatever my well, other the, songs are. Like I tried to keep it collaborative. Satellite. Yeah. Um, I had a whole other song written for that. Yeah. And then you sort of took the my melody and and then we did different. Yeah. So the, to the, it. the 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 verse Which that is, Patrick has is sort of sort of the, the anyway. It's it's long and complicated to yeah. explain, but uh, but. But we uh, did the same thing for the for uh, Money City Maniacs as well. What's that? So the second verse, Chris had sort of a, a come up with a melody for for the riff that I had, and so I made that the second verse, mm-hmm. and then he wrote some lyrics, and I think I switched a line or something. But. Tw- Twenty years, by the way, of Money City Maniacs. Yeah, we talked about that yeah. on the oh, show right. on, yeah. on the show the other day. Right. Does Mickey it, Blues was twenty just the other day. That's right. Yeah. yeah 20. 20. Like like to the to the day. Like we're 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 yeah, pretty May close to it. Twenty something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does it feel like twenty years? Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Oh my God, every time every is called goddamn day like it. of twenty years. No. It's funny when you when you've been in something so long. Like when I think of something that happened the year before Sloan happened, that seems like a million years ago. But mm. but everything that because we've been on this continuum, it's almost like time. Yeah, collapses. It's like oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. But because yeah. we all share the same memories. Yeah. The other weird thing though is that it's not that it was released twenty years ago. It's that, we, that it came out seven years into our career. Right. Like that seems weird to me. To me, seven years into our career would have been like Like something later, you mean? Kinda like uh, would have been like pretty together or something? No, or? it's oh. the opposite. The like, opposite. Okay. Like, like good and everyone would have been seven years into our career. Okay, gotcha. Not yeah, yeah. Money City, but right. do you do you do you ever take the time? I mean one thing I've always loved about your band is that you you are always keeping going, and people. Tr- well, I think people want to ask you, you know, how did you manage to stay together so long? They want to ask you about the good and everyone. They want to ask you about Money City Maniacs. They want to ask you about these, these big songs. Yeah. I, I understand that it's yeah. fine. You're, and you're like, to be fair, you're always incredibly gracious about yeah. it. I'm really interested in. Do you ever take like quiet moments to take stock and actually listen back to any of these songs? Listen back to any of these old records and just and just think on them, or does that defeat the kind of further goingness of Sloan? Uh, I don't know if I sit and listen to our songs all that. I mean, sometimes when we uh, are preparing for a tour, it's like, oh, let's try and dig out some songs we haven't, you know, played in a long time. And I'll listen to a record like, oh, my God, I forgot completely how to play this song. And Mm -hmm. you're really, you know, trying to teach yourself how to play, uh, I don't know, something like It's In Your Eyes, which is a song of Patrick's from uh, Pretty Together. And uh, I hadn't listened to it in years and just had to sit and figure out all the guitar parts. Mm So... Uh, and and sometimes we we do these other things as well these reissue projects of like box sets and things and so sometimes there's a bit of a re-listening to old demos but, and but, stuff like that but never well. anything outside of like just practicality there's no you know. oh I see yeah. yeah 
I don't know. I'm, 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 stuff. I mean, sometimes with headphones on yeah. and by myself, <laughs> and there's nobody for miles around me. But, but this is true. This is true. <laughs> I listen to stuff every now and then, especially when when we're recording, like go and reference old old recordings to say, oh, what, how did I how did those keyboards sound or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's, there's just a lot to be proud of, and I, I, I want to know if you ever take stock and go, you know, this is this is something else. Sometimes, um, you know, people. <laughs> Would would imagine like they'll meet my kids and and assume that they know about Sloan, but they don't know anything. They don't know any of the music. They've heard a couple things now, but I was always terrified that someone would look in my window and see me <laughs> dancing <laughs> with my kid, especially to my own music. They wouldn't see the kid because the, 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 the in the window they would just see me dancing <laughs> to my own music in my own house, and then I would have to kill myself. Well, you'd have to move. You'd have to at least have move. To move yeah. You'd have to at least And then they look at each curtains. other and they're like, I yeah. always thought, <laughs> yeah. I suspected that all the time. Yeah, or as Andrew Classic. said, just invest in the blinds. Yeah, yeah. Blind. Get a few Head, drapes. Headphones. Yeah. You want drapes? Is that a thing? Do you guys say drapes? <laughs> drapes is Newfoundland. Uh, is that really? That's yeah. an East Coast saying? No. Drapes? No. Oh, okay. Do you guys say drapes? <laughs> okay, you say drapes. Well, we've, we've figured out our the commonality. The rapper drapes? That is me. I'm unfamiliar. Thanks for coming in. This is fun. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.